church, but you don't patch the hole. If you separate from the world, but you are not reading the word, you are not studying the word, you are not living by the word, you are clean in the sight of the Lord. Those two things must go together. You chew the cord and you patch the hoop. It says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Verse 15, in verse 15, or what concord, what agreement, what understanding has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? Verse 16, it says, and what agreement it has the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And then in verse 17, where, wherefore come out from among them, he said, Have you heard my word? Have you chewed the cord? Then patch the hoof and come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you verse 18 and I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughter says the Lord Almighty. Revelation chapter 18, we're reading from verse 4. In Revelation chapter 18, looking at uh, verse 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, part the hoop. Show the cord, take the word, believe the word, receive the word, and then pat the home. And it says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her place. Let's come to number two now. Number two, we're looking at provided fruits for a healthier life and uh, happy existence we're talking about the other side of what we eat now the fruits the vegetables the things that grow out of the land out of land i'm sure you understand those things the fruits vegetables uh, the purple the papaya the pineapple the orange and and all those things if the tomatoes chew and the pomegranate and all the things that grow like that they are not meat but we need them and the lord has created them and so we have the combination of the food and the fruit provided fruits for a healthier life and a happy existence in genesis chapter 1 reading from verse 29 genesis chapter 1 verse 29 god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed even the seeds we need them they nourish a body which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me and then in verse 30 in verse 30 it says unto every beast of the of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb green herb vegetables fruits i've given every green herb for meat and it was so 
Then in verse 43, we're looking at verse 11. The, the children of Jacob, the sons of Jacob, they were going back to Egypt to go and buy a food. And then their father, now look at what he gave them in 43 verse 11. And their father, Israel, Jacob, said unto them, If it must be so now, do this, and take of the best fruits of the land in your vessels. The fruits of the land, the best fruits of the land. What did he say, the best fruits of the land? Uh, the, the, the fruits have different food values, nutrients in them. Uh, and you will, if you study, you'll see that this kind of fruit will lower blood pressure. This kind of fruit will lower the sugar, blood sugar. But some of the fruits have sugar in themselves. And uh, the proportion of sugar they have may make some of the fruits not suitable for your body if you have the sugar uh, blood sugar. That's why you compare the values and then say, this is good, this is, this is the best for me. And he says, take the best of the fruits of the land in your vessel and carry down the man, uh, carry down to the man a present, a little balm, a little honey. You see, honey is also there and spices. Uh, there are things to use to spice for your food and my and nuts, nuts, nuts are part of the fruit. There is gun nuts, there is, uh, you know, the almond, and you have all the other nuts there, and you will see their various values, and it says take the nuts as well as, well as almond, almond. You see the people of that time, uh, they knew what nuts are very good for us, and what nuts have a real value, and what nuts they can even soak in water and make milk out of them. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at essential fruits for sustained health. Fruit essential so that our health can be sustained. Number two, enjoyable fruits that strengthen hearts. They strengthen the heart. When we talk of the heart, we're not talking of the spiritual heart now. We're talking of your normal heart. The center that has all those valves and they pump all the blood to circulate your body and to get blood to the brain, the heart. When the heart is strong and healthy, it serves you well. Uh, you don't run a little bit and then you are tired. You don't walk a little bit and then you want to sleep because you have a strong heart. And then that strong heart gives the rest of your body real strength. Number three, expected fruit from the spiritual ears. As we consider our body, we we'll also consider our soul and our spirit so that we balance up everything. Look at number one, essential fruits for sustained health. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 5, I make me gardens and orchards and planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. Uh, you know, there are people, they have a backyard and, and they put a little garden there. And in that little garden, they can plant the fruits. They can plant the vegetables. And they have uh, things, uh, things that you might pay for in the market. But at the back of their houses, they have all that, uh, all those uh, fruits that are growing. And the essential things that you ought to have, either you make them, you, you go there and you take them so that you can be healthy. I pray God will give us wisdom. Look at uh, the next thing there in uh, Psalm 104. I'm reading from verse 13. Psalm 104, we're looking at uh, verse 13. It says, He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works, the works of God. At the rains come, 
all those things they grow you know and, and you also you you take advantage of the rain and you grow you have the mushrooms and you have the vegetables of different kinds and then you have the seeds of various kinds because you are making use of the work of the Lord and the work of your hand now you produce the fruits look at verse 14 in verse 14 it says he causes the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man the herbs for the service of man uh, you know when you take tea where do you think tea comes from all those herbs either it is you know this kind of uh, grass or this kind of thing that grow out and then you process everything and you make the tea and they will say this kind of tea will nourish this this kind of tea will solve this other problem and if you're having this and this this kind of tea it is for to serve us to make us healthy that he may bring forth food food out of the earth out of the earth now the cattle does not grow out of the earth the fish does not grow out of the earth and all those birds do not grow out of the earth therefore they are not the completeness of our food but the vegetables and the fruits and the nuts and and the potatoes whether it's the Irish potato or it is you know the sweet potato all those things they grow out of the earth and they are made for food for us in Amos chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 14 Amos chapter 9 verse 14 it says and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel and they shall build the way cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards vineyards and drink the wine thereof uh, that means it's not alcohol it's not talking of fermented wine it's talking of the fruit juice that you make that you have the vine and then either you squeeze whatever or you have the juicy machine and you squeeze them and it says they'll drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens 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 of cucumber gardens of tomato and gardens of you know whatever and then you are reaping them and eat the fruit of them essential eat the fruit of them we're coming to number two here number two we're looking at enjoyable fruits that strengthen hearts in deuteronomy chapter 11 reading from verse 10 deuteronomy chapter 11 reading from verse 10 it says for the land whither thou goest to possess it is not as the land of egypt for uh, from whence ye came out where thou sowest thy seed and watered it with thy foot as a garden of herbs it said uh, the, the land you are coming to you've been crying uh, will remember the cucumber wait until you get to the new land you're going to have cucumbers uh, much more than you ever ate your life and we remember the onions onions are very good and we remember all the leeks and everything wait until you get to the land because the land is very fruitful it is not like egypt where you have to take the jerry can and then go and water it by yourself the land you are going the almighty god waters it from heaven look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says but the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain from heaven look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says and the land which the lord thy god careth for the eyes of the lord thy god are always upon it upon that land from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year the lord was telling them you remember egypt you remember egypt and the fruits and everything used to take 
wait until you get to that land that land there, there are some uh, fruits in Egypt there are some fruits in every land this one grows at the beginning of the year this one grows at the rainy season this one grows in summer that other one grows at different times of the year the land you are going all through the year from the beginning of the year the fruit will be fresh and the fruit will be available because God waters the land every time all the period of the year we'll come to number three now number three number three we're looking at expected fruit from uh, for uh, spiritual ears we are the ears of god look at galatians chapter three and i'm reading from the titus chapter three rather titus chapter three we're looking at verse seven it says that being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life we're not the heirs of god and joint heir what christ in verse 8 in verse 8 it says this is a faithful saying and these things i will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in god might be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto me look at verse 14 in verse 14 let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful as in the natural in the physical we take those fruits and they nourish every part of our lives the same thing spiritual now we shall have the fruits the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit that we have that will manifest will make us to also show forth the good works that we ought to have in galatians chapter 4 reading from verse 6 galatians chapter 4 verse 6 and because he has sons god has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father and then in verse 7 it says wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of god an heir of god that is spiritual heirs the fruit we ought to bear the fruit we ought to produce because we are spiritual heirs it says heir of god through Christ. It tells us in chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 19. In verse 19, now the works of the flesh are these. These are people that have not had any contact with the Holy Spirit. They have not been born again. They have not been born of water and of the Spirit. And all they have is the works of the flesh flesh it says there are these which are adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness verse 20 idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies verse 21 it says envies and murders and drunkenness and rebellions and such like of the which i tell you before as i have told you in time past that they shall not that uh, uh, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god the people who are strangers to the god who produces fruit in our lives the people who are foreigners to the holy spirit that produces fruit in our life and they're all in the flesh and their works and their actions and the outcome of their lives are all of the flesh they shall not inherit the kingdom of god but the people who have relationship with the Holy Spirit who bears fruit in our lives, they are born again and they can testify by the word of the Spirit that they are real children of God and the Holy Spirit abides in them and produces fruit in them. What are the fruits? Verse 22. In verse 22 it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, 
gentleness, goodness, faith, verse 23. It says meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. Verse 24. In verse 24, it says, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the laws. Verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit and then in verse 26 it says let us not be desirous of vain glory interaction with the spirit connection with the spirit and living in the spirit takes i want to i want to i want to and the desires of the world of the flesh it takes all that away let us not be desirous of being glory provoking one another and being one another romans chapter 6 we're looking at verse 22 in romans chapter 6 verse 22 but now be made free from sin we have contact with christ and if the son shall make you free ye shall be free indeed that freedom that comes from christ our savior that freedom that comes from christ our lord is said being made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit, your fruit, your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. In verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, separation from God forever and ever. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus our Lord. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, proper feeding for a holy life and heaven's entry. We're not talking about proper feeding. We're feeding ourselves knowing that the body will feed well here to live a good life, a healthy life, and possibly long life. But no matter how long the life is, we live up to 100, 120, 150, yet one day the physical life will say, I can't bear enough, whatever food you're giving me, but then when dust returns to dust, the spirit, the soul, the heart will return unto God that gave it. And that time, you want to enter into heaven. If you're going to enter into heaven, you must have been feeding your soul and feeding your spirit. And your soul, your spirit is healthy and fit to get to heaven. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8, and I'm reading there from verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It says, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know to understand and to acknowledge that man does not live by bread only but but by every word you live by every word now you understand you cannot um, it's okay i'll not take fruit i'll not take meat i'll not take bread i'll not take fish i'll not eat any food that will go through the mouth i'm only going to take the food that goes through the ear and through the eye well you will live spiritually but you will not live physically to live physically you take the food that goes through the mouth and to live spiritually you take the food that goes through the eyes by reading and goes through the ear by hearing that will live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the lord does man live in matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 3 matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 3 and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread 
after Satan, tempting him. Satan, very limited in his understanding of spiritual things, the God of this world. He only cares for the bread that will nourish the body. But Jesus went beyond that, knew beyond him. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And to start with, to understand all those words to read for myself, from Jeremiah, from Ezekiel, from Daniel, they were not the words of Isaiah. They were not the words of Ezekiel. They were not the words of uh, Jeremiah. They were not the words of Daniel. They were words that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at diligently feeding on the word for a humble life. Number two, daily following the word. Christ is the word. Daily following the word for a holy life. Number three, decidedly drinking of the water for a heavenward life. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at diligently feeding on the word for a humble life. It tells us in First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and uh, and all evil speaking. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby. Uh, just like, you know, our mothers will tell us when we're very young, uh, before meals, I want to eat that. No, you can't eat that. I want to take that. No, you can't take that because you will not digest the food you are going to eat properly. If you take this and that in the spiritual, we also abandon all those things so that the word of God we're taking will make us to grow spiritually. It tells us in uh, Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 8. In Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 8, he has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly. How do you do justly? By reading the word of God. You know what is just? What is unjust? You know what is clean? You know what is unclean? You know what is acceptable and what is unacceptable? You take the word of God, then you'll be able to walk justly and to love mercy, no retaliation, no revenge, and to walk humbly with thy God. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at daily following the word for a holy life. In John chapter 1, reading from verse 1, it says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In verse 2, it says the same was in the, be was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, and it says all things were made by him. He calls him the word in verse 1. He calls it him in verse 3. It's Jesus Christ the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says in him the word was life. And the life was the light of men. In verse 14. And the word became flesh. is Jesus Christ and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and the truth. And this is the word that we follow. We live like him. We live for him. We live by his strength. 
that he gives us in Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It says, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That the reason we're able to follow him and live for him and live like him and live by his strength. And then it says, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at number three here now. Number three, decidedly drinking uh, of the water for a heavenward life. It tells us in John chapter 4, John chapter 4, it tells us in verse 13, John chapter 4 verse 13, this is Jesus Christ talking to the woman at the well. And, and the woman at the well, you know, wanted water. And Jesus said, I'm going to give you water if you want, if you like, if you ask. The water that is not from this well, he says in verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water from the well shall thirst again. And then in verse 14, verse 14 says, And whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him or her shall be in him or in her a well of water springing up into everlasting life we, be, we come to him we believe in him we lean on him he gives us the water of life the living water and that gives us salvation and it changes our desires that we don't desire the things of the flesh anymore we desire the things of the spirit and it will flow and flow and flow unto everlasting life we're looking at Ephesians chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 2 to six. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 and that he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word. Uh, the water, uh, now the ordinary water, when we take the ordinary water on the inside, it will cleanse us. When we take the ordinary water, all our intestines and all our nerves and everyone, and then to purge and purify the impurities away from our system. The same thing after we are saved and we take in the water of life and the word of the Lord, it cleanses us, it washes away all those impurities and everything that will attach itself unto us. It said that He might sanctify and cleanse it by the with the washing of water by the word. In verse 27, it said that He might present it to Himself a glorious church, a church that is washed a church that is cleansed, a church that is purged and purified, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. The ordinary water, have you noticed, uh, you know, even if you are old chronologically in years, but you are not taking enough water, it affects your skin and the wrinkles will be appearing earlier than necessary. But when you are taking the normal water and you refresh your body, it smoothes out all those wrinkles. You take the water of life and the water of the world and the old wrinkles, everything will be smoothing out or any such thing, you know, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Uh, we're coming to John chapter 7. And we're reading now from verse 37. John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He has spoken to us of water relating to salvation. 
He has spoken to us of water relating to sanctification. Now he's speaking to us of water that relates to the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Any man at first, let him come unto me and drink. In verse 38, it says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his inner man shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, it says, But they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The Lord is inviting us, come, come for the bread of life and come for the water of life. In Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 6, Revelation 21, reading from verse 6, and it says unto me, it is done. It's all provided. It's all accomplished. It's all finished. Everything now can be yours. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Everything is now available for you. For your health, for your life, for your prosperity, for your progress, for your salvation, for sanctification, for Holy Ghost baptism, for spiritual life, for satisfaction, for enjoyment, and for moving from here to heaven, everything is now available. Come, and it is free. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that all that the Lord has provided for our body, for our spirit, and for our soul, everything is now yours. Come come. There's no discrimination. He will not push you back. He will not say no. Anything you need restoration, you need revival, you need righteousness, everything is now available. He loves you. And he has provided, he has prepared everything for you. Think about that. He thinks about our health. He thinks about our sound, our soundness. He thinks about even our brain. He thinks about everything he provides. It thinks about a holistic thing, provision he has provided for you. It thinks about a happy life for you. It thinks about a healthy life for you. It thinks about a holy life for you. It thinks about a humble life for you. It thinks about a heavenly life for you. Why don't you ask the Lord, pray and tell the Lord, I know everything is available. Tell the Lord. All things pertaining to life and godliness, everything he provides. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. If the food, if the bread is there, then you must make allowance to go where the food is and take of that food. And the fruit. Do you have a balanced diet? Or do you only take one kind of food? Everything is provided. Everything is made available. And the meat, and the fish, and the bird, and the chicken, everything provided. Nourish your body. Don't stop yourself. Nourish your body. Make it balanced. What you take, what you have, and take it at the appropriate time. Breakfast, appropriate time. Lunch, appropriate time. Dinner, supper, appropriate time. Make it varied with the varied needs of your body. Take the juice. Don't always juice them. Don't miss the fiber in them. And not starch, starch, starch every time. Balance it up. 
know the condition of your body and know what is appropriate for your body balance it all don't miss out on water you drink enough water don't allow the risk of stone in your kidney water water nourishes your body dissolves those stones in the kidney don't allow your nerves your muscles your system to be deprived of enough water drink don't drink harmful liquid fermented juice that's rather ulcerate your system and derail derange your brain and it's spiritually the bread of life, the word of God. Be taken regularly as you feed your body, which will last for a few years on earth, much more so. Feed your spirit feed your inner man with the word the bread of life the word the water of life feed well and bury the spiritual diet old testament new testament from the pentateuch Genesis to Deuteronomy, from the historical books, from Joshua to Esther, from the poetic books, from Jew to the songs of Solomon, and then from the prophets, major prophets, minor prophets, feed yourself. And then you come to the New Testament, feed the word of his grace feed the word of his power feed the words of the promises of God feed yourself so that your inner man and your outer man in a balanced way will be well fed and then your feet to live on earth was strength your feet to live on earth with real focus and then your feet to get to heaven your faith faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God the food the faith that makes you feed for us and for heaven. In your prayer, take proper decision as to how to feed well, not for gluttony, but for health. Make your consecration as so long you will feed on the word of God. Your commitment as to how you will live according to the word that you have heard. 
and your contribution to the kingdom of God and you spend and be spent for the progress of the kingdom of God. Make your decision and live on that decision. And the Lord will give you strength, physically, spiritually. Will keep you going, feeling well every day. Learning the word, leaning on the Lord every day. Then it qualifies you for heaven. And at last, you live with him because you have lived here for him you live with him forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for what we have learned. We pray, Lord, all these things will not fall to the ground, but will be fruitful in every heart in Jesus' name. Lord, we we'll pray you bless our bread, you bless our water, and you take sickness, infirmity, disease away from everyone in Jesus' name. Because of Calvary and because of Christ who died to pay for everything and to take our sicknesses, infirmities away, I pray that any sickness, any infirmity in our system, because of how we lived in the past, of whatever we seen, take all that infirmity, all that sickness away from everyone in Jesus' name. Make your people healthy. Make your people strong. And make your people feed to live, feed to walk, feed to run, and free to do everything you have appointed us for us to do on earth in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, grant your people the bread of life. And Lord, I pray that spiritual strength salvation sanctification holy ghost baptism and power will be the gift and the lord for every one of your children in jesus name the desire and also the passion to wait on the lord so that we renew our strength grant unto everyone and we pray the weak will become strong the firm will become very much strengthened in Jesus' name. Your presence in our lives, your power in our lives, your prominence in every life will make us a new man every day, a new woman every day. We wake up in the morning and we eat the bread of life and we drink the water of life and then we go into life with daily renewed strength in Jesus' name. And Lord, every obstacle in our way for progress, every obstacle in our way for success, every obstacle in our way to hinder, to debar, to stop, clear it from every life in Jesus' name. And make us, Lord, to achieve whatever you want us to achieve here and then hereafter to have the crown and the reward. None of us will miss any of that in Jesus' name. As your people go, clear the way for everyone. Take evil away from everyone. And I pray that your purpose, your plan will be fulfilled in the life of everyone as we make progress and nothing will stop our progress all through life in Jesus' name. Your mighty hand on everyone, your protection for everyone. Go before us, go before us, and Lord, take us to our expected destination. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
praise the Lord. You are welcome to today's worship service in Jesus' name. I want to go to the Lord in prayer as we start the service. I believe that as we come here today, we will not go home the same. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. And we want to go to the Lord in prayer. In Psalm 16, verse 11, it says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are joys forevermore. As we are here today, in the presence of the Lord, great things will happen in our lives. Number one, the Lord will show us the path of life. Number two, we are going to have fullness of joy. Do you believe that? Then open your mouth and thank the Lord that you are here today. The Lord will not send you, uh, send you home empty-handed. Open your mouth, glorify the Lord that you are part of the service of today. Thank the Lord for the week that ended yesterday. Many that saw the beginning of last week, some are not alive today, but here we are, alive physically, alive in the Lord. We have the reason to thank the Lord and bless his name who has preserved us going out coming in in these perilous times let's worship the Lord and glorify the Lord because the Lord is good his mercies endure forever in Jesus name we have prayed we want to thank God for what he is doing it's a day of in worship. all the GCK a day of adoration of the past. And let's come what before God his presence, worshiping the Lord. This crusade, global crusade with Kumuyi. Open your mouth and worship God for all the wonderful things he is in doing. In Jesus' name, and at we pray. And every GCK we, we have been having, we are going to commit you will see a new service dimension, into the hand of the Lord. a new dimension that of miracle, Lord a new dimension of expansion, in our worship a new service dimension today. of... And glory be to the Lord. Amen. Let us sing, amen, rejoice, amen, glory be to the Lord, amen, amen. To the Lord, praise to the Lord, from whom all blessings flow, from whom all blessings flow. From whom all blessings flow, praise ye the Lord. From whom all blessings flow, praise him forevermore. Praise ye the Lord. From whom protection flow, from whom promotion flow, from whom provision flow, praise ye the Lord, from whom all blessings flow, praise him forevermore, hallelujah. From whom all 
blessings flow forever. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh Lord, you have been. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life. Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh, Lord, you are excellent in my life. so good to be, oh Lord, you are excellent. Open my eyes, oh Lord, hallelujah, open my eyes, oh Lord, hallelujah, open my eyes, oh Lord, I am ready to obey, I am ready to obey. Are you ready now? I am ready to obey. I am ready to obey. I am ready, Lord. Hallelujah, open my eyes, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. To obey, ready to obey. It is thy word that sets me free. It is thy word that sets me free. It is thy word, the loving word. It is thy word that sets me, that sets me free. 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 It is thy word that sets me free. It is thy word that sets me free. It is thy word, the word of God. It is thy word that sets me free. thy word that sets me he has promised he will never fail I will follow him 
I will follow him. My God has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. His faithfulness is forevermore, forevermore. the Lord. We welcome everyone here to this Monday Bible study in Jesus' name. We want to especially welcome those that are coming for the first time. Like the Global Crusade converts, our invitees and visitors. For if today is your first time of coming to study the Bible with us in the headquarters here. We want to welcome you and bring our pastor's greeting unto you. So wherever you are seated, just signify by raising up your hand. Wherever you are, signify by raising up your hand. Can you stand up? Can you stand up? Don't be shy. You are in the midst of the children of God. You are welcome in Jesus' name. We want to encourage you to continue coming. Our pastor is very happy that you are here. And the God who has been using him as a source of blessing to thousands and millions of us he will also use him to be of a blessing in your life in Jesus' name. Please don't allow today to be your last time of coming. Continue coming. As you continue coming, the Lord will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. The ushers will give you a slip to fill. Collect it from them. Fill it very well with capital letters your name very clearly, your address, and also your telephone number. As you, after filling it, you give it back to the ushers. You can sit down. Weekly meetings. Next Monday, 17th July, 2023, our brethren in Old Agege District will be coming here for their Monday Bible study at for 5.45 p.m. Tuesday Leadership Development. The Tuesday Leadership Development, development for all Tuesday leaders will hold here tomorrow at 5.15 p.m. Saturday Workers Training. This coming Saturday, 15th July, 2023, we shall be having the ministerial renewal in all our old district locations for all workers in the church, workers in training and professionals. The program starts at 9 a.m. We want to encourage all our leaders to encourage the workers to be there. It is for our spiritual nourishment and growth. So let's do everything possible to make sure that all workers are in our various locations. Also this next Sunday worship service, 16th July, 2023, service group one, brethren will be coming here for their combined Sunday worship service at 7.45 a.m. We should come with converts from all our outreaches, invitees, friends, and colleagues. And as we come with them, the Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. 